Hey there everybody, Son of the Morning here, and uh, we're going to do another comic review. This review that we're going to do now is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy number 3 uh, by Al Ewing. Um, if you hadn't read the last uh, issue of this series, you could always check out my video. Um, but the Olympians have arrived... Uh, they have a prisoner who is Hercules, and uh, they needed to free Hercules, and in doing so, um, Star-Lord or Peter Quill managed to blow himself up. Now, is he actually dead? Eh, this is comics. I'm doubting he's actually dead. But, um, at very least where this story begins, everybody thinks that he's dead. So, um, let's open her up and we'll see what we've got today. And so you can see here, obviously, Rocket is beside himself. He's very upset about the fact that, uh, Quill is dead and he also feels partly responsible for it. Now, I find, found the first couple pages of this issue to be a little bit strange. Now, from an artistic perspective, I think that it's really good. Uh, I, I really like the art on these pages, but I really don't like the uh, um, the switching up of Groot talking normal English and everybody else talking like Groot. Uh, so, like for example, I am Gamora, and then, you know, I am Drax. <laughs> Once again, I am Gamora. Uh, and, and the only one who's talking is uh, is Groot, and I find it a little bit strange. I don't even really understand what the point of all of that is, but that's okay. It's a nice-looking scene. Which, of course, continues on to the next page. Now, <clears throat> now we have Hercules saying, I am Hercules. We've got a, I am Gamora, I am Rocket, uh, and then, you know, I am Drax, I am Rocket, and she says, I am Gamora, as she smacks Rocket. Uh, she's very much not happy with Rocket, as she is blaming Rocket for uh, Peter's death. Now, this, of course, continues here for another few pages. Um... And, uh, like I said, it's just, uh, I don't understand what the point of it was. Um, filling space? I, I'm not sure. So basically we've gotten, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six... Six pages before we have a, a page where it uh, no longer says, uh, I am whoever except for Groot who's talking. So, I just found that very strange. I don't know if that was just filler because they didn't have enough to fill the issue here, especially when you're missing your uh, main character. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, looks like there's another, uh, X-type story coming out. Uh, I wonder how that's gonna turn out, but nevertheless. In this book here, we've finally started the story, and it begins in Drax's quarters, and, um, he is, uh, listening to some music, um... And he's trying to enjoy himself in this rough time. Uh, his daughter comes in, Moondragon, uh, and he tells her that she shouldn't be there. They're very, both very confused because they don't know if they're actually Drax and Moondragon. Are they the reincarnated versions? Are they really still themselves? Uh, I, I think that was kind of an interesting little interplay there. Uh, so, it, it, they're talking, they still obviously have affection for each other, father and son, um, 
and uh, interesting little thing here. Um, we have Moon Dragon starts crying because they're talking about uh, talking about how uh, uh, Gamora is very upset about Peter dying, and she pretty much wants to kill everybody that was involved. Gamora's kind of violent at times, but she's a great character. Um, now, what Moon Dragon says is, not me, I wasn't there, it was the other one, the perfect one, not me, it's never me. And, uh, Drax is, uh, he's just feeling sorry for her. This is actually, I really like this drawing right here, it shows, uh, you know, Moon Dragon and, um, Rocket and Philovel and the crew as they are, uh, fighting off some foes, and, um, back to, the, so, you know, they're talking about the situation, and she's still very upset about it, uh, Drax comments that, you know, if he is his father, you, you said it yourself, Arthur Douglas died, and his memories are broken, torn, and faded, how can I trust them? Now that is, um, uh, Arthur Douglas, I guess, is the body in which, um, Drax was reincarnated into, um, Moondragon wants him to trust her, and, um, they relax and, and watch the show here. Cool, cool drawing there. This is, uh, I like it. Um, Anyway, we flip the page again here. We got more ads for Empire that nobody cares about. And um, here we have sort of a flashback that Gamora is having when she's talking about the different times where, you know, Quill and her were talking about, and this happened earlier in the series, how they could just give it all up and just be together, no more saving the galaxy, that sort of thing. Um, she's lying in bed, sort of thinking about this stuff, uh, and she is quite upset. And who can blame her? Her, uh, her guy has sacrificed himself and gotten blown up. And of course, in her upset, uh, state. Uh, of course, she's she's got a dagger in her hand, because she's always at the ready for that. Oh, always at the ready for that sort of thing. And uh, so then I guess uh, Gamora is talking to this psychologist, and she's trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to deal with things. Um, Gamora never wants Rocket to come back. She never wants to see him again. Um... The doctor tries to make a joke, doesn't work on Gamora, um, and, you know, she starts thinking more about, uh, her times with, uh, Quill, and how they wanted to just sort of escape that life forever, and, unfortunately, she doesn't see that as ever being a possibility, she's lying in bed here, and she's, uh, saying to herself, so who was Peter speaking to with so much yearning, who is he begging, fate, time, the galaxy that always seemed to need him to guard it, the galaxy that was pulling them back into all its madness. So I guess she's kind of resigned to the fact that even though they are trying to uh, uh, separate themselves and maybe start a new life, that it's probably never going to happen. And then, of course, she is uh, told that their ship is ready and it's time to head out. And, of course, Gamora is always at the ready for battle. That's what happens when Thanos raises you. And so then we have the Guardians here. And, you know, we know that she doesn't want to have anything to do with Rocket. So, um, the Guardians are in place. We got Moon Dragon, Groot, um... Drax and Gamora, and uh, they're gonna go and 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 save the galaxy again. But of course, Gamora says only for the right price. Uh, so they they head out, and they're gonna do that. And now we move to an illegally parked escape shuttle near 
Ephrata 2 one day later. And um, here we have uh, that there's no guardians here yet. But, you know, we're, we've got uh, what I like to call uh, Mecha Roger Rabbit. I know what his name is, but he's Mecha Roger Rabbit. And um, he's sitting there with um, Hercules. And Hercules is telling him, please don't call me your highness. Um, it, and uh, that's all good. And so Hercules looks at his little calm thing and he sees that Drax, Gamora, Groot and, and Moondragon are on their way but Rocket is not with them so that makes Mecha uh, Roger Rabbit happy and um, they have the he makes the call saying that they have their six sentient mercenary team ready at which time we go to Beaver Man <laughs> Uh, and so basically, this guy here is having a conversation, um, with you, uh, with, um, with Mecha Roger Rabbit. I, I, I know his name, I just prefer that. Uh, I apologize, and we find out that he wants, uh, he wants him to murder Rocket. And that's how this story ends. We still don't know anything about Quill. We don't know if he's alive. We don't know if he's dead. Um, this issue, quite honestly, nothing really happens in this issue. So there's really not a whole lot to talk about um, until we get to the point where they are actually searching for Quill and eventually find Quill because we know that they will. But, uh, so this is just sort of, uh, almost feels like a placeholder, especially with those first six pages where literally nothing is happening except for good art. But that doesn't mean that it's time to stop following Guardians of the Galaxy because I generally want to know what happened. I, I genuinely want to know what happened to Quill. So we'll be checking that out next month when it comes out. I want to thank you for joining me here today on the Sun of the Morning channel. Uh, if you like the content, content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. You can visit me on Twitter at Sun of the Morning 7. We can talk about whatever you'd like Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever, anything else. And, you know. We'll see. We'll, we'll do number four. It's It'll be fine. I have a feeling it'll be fine. This is just sort of an anomaly of an issue. So, whether you're watching this in the morning, afternoon, evening, or at night, have a good one.